Hello, everyone. Just kidding. I am not Samantha Farlow because she's totally doing classes right now. <laughs> I am Sergeant Lamont Shabers, the public affairs NCO for the 69th Air Defense Artillery Brigade, one of your co-hosts. And I am uh, Corporal, I almost said specialist, still not sunk in yet, Corporal Brianna Dew with the 1st Cavalry Division Band. And I am Specialist Kyra Pearl with the 11th Corps Signal Brigade. And you are listening to Fort Hood's Great Great Big Big Podcast. Podcast. The month of August is designated Anti-Terrorism Awareness Month. That's right. I'm Master Sergeant Akiola Oladipo, Anti-Terrorism Specialist for U.S. Army Garrison for the Hood. And here's a reminder. Vigilance isn't a one-time thing. Remain always ready, always alert, because someone is depending on you. First protection starts with you. If you see something, say something. Here in the Fort Hood military community, the number to call is 254-288-COPS or 254-288-2677. That number again is 254-288-2677. See something? Then say something. Kids are heading back to school Monday, August 16th on the installation. As a reminder, school crossing guards will be in place and school speed zones will be in effect in the morning and again when children are released in the afternoon. Slow down in school zones and wherever children are present. And remember, talking on cell phones while driving without a hands-free device is prohibited on the installation. Flash floods in Central Texas happen within only a few hours of rain. Every year, more than 80% of flood fatalities involve vehicles and about 10 people drown in their vehicles each year in Texas. Vehicles of every size can lose control, float, and roll over in flood conditions. Is taking the risk worth it? Is it worth the risk of leaving loved ones behind? Overconfidence kills. Don't drive through flood water. It's not worth it. Fort Hood's Great Big Podcast. Your tax dollars at work. So the month of August is designated as Anti-Terrorism Awareness Month. And with us today, we have Joe Tanatongo, the lead anti-terrorism specialist with the Fort Hood Force Protection. Thank you for having me. Nice to have you, sir. Thanks for being here. Thank you. So why is Anti-Terrorism Awareness Month important? So Anti-Terrorism Month is a, it's, it's a, it's a process for providing communication and information to our community and to also protect our facilities and to ensure that uh, our forces are ready for their mission. Awesome. So since we're talking about this, you actually just got done teaching a class. And my question for you is, so can you tell us about these classes that are going on throughout the month and why you're teaching these classes? So we have uh, the Insider Thread that's uh, been hosted by the G357 from uh, the Pentagon. Uh, I teach the AT Level 1 Awareness. Basically, the AT World, uh, Level Awareness is more of providing that information to the community on how, how to uh, pr- protect themselves uh, by, you know, you know what, what are suspicious activities look like and who to report those suspicious activity too. So what kind of, um, I know you mentioned being suspicious or, or shady, what kind of uh, things does that entail? What should people look for and, and what shouldn't they look for that maybe is a common misconception? Well, a good example is somebody just kind of lingering around and uh, like, for example, a vehicle, just looking around the vehicle, is something suspicious that could maybe uh, an individual can place something on that particular vehicle, and uh, uh, things might just blow up. Yeah. No, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Or like wearing a really big hot jacket in the middle of summer. Right. It's been hot out here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's very suspicious. <laughs> I'm doing it for fashion, I swear. Yeah. <laughs> you just didn't understand. <laughs> 
So um, it, the anti-terrorism training is, I know, an, an annual requirement for soldiers. And sometimes we do it online to fulfill the requirements. Sometimes we do it in person. Sometimes it's a combination of both. And I've always found um, in these classes that the the insider threats are a lot more mm, interesting than than just kind of random, uh, you know, random outsider threats. Can you explain a little bit more about insider threats and what to look for with that? Okay, well, it normally starts down at the uh, particular unit level because uh, the command team really knows the behavior of their their soldiers. So that's where you start off, and they start looking at those behavioral uh, uh, act, and then they can start looking at some process to assist this individual. Because if you don't, you know, they're going to start going through certain steps and then uh, elevate that uh, behavioral to an insider threat. That's mm-hmm. so cool. It kind of, like, relates back to people first, knowing your soldiers. Yes. And yeah, that's really cool. Exactly. Uh, so I know earlier this year, the Department of Defense was really cracking down on extremism. Does, uh, does Is that something that falls under your offices? Well, part of it. We have a threat fusion cell, and we we bring in our JTTF, FBI, you know, local agencies, uh, threat analysts, and uh, we bring those information in, we fuse it, and then we come up with a recommendation to the senior commander as to what process we have to go forward prior, before this uh, incident occurs. So I know we're all very familiar with what's called the bystander effect. It's oh. you see something's happening, you're like, no, I'm not going to handle it. it. And it really does not matter if it's a sharp-related event or sexual assault, harassment. It doesn't matter if it's someone assaulting someone or, in this case, preventing terrorism in any type of way. But it's always, no, he's going to do it or she's going to do it. So I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to turn around. With how serious anti-terrorism is, how do we prevent the bystander effect? You know, report it. You have to report it. It's, you know, even if it's not a, a true incident, I mean, you're not going to get in trouble. But at least you report it. You report it. 288 cops here at all the installation or 911. Yeah. And what would you say to the soldiers that are worried about maybe some reprisal? Like if, especially if, you know, you're an E1 or an E2 and you want to report maybe an E5 or an E6, someone in your chain, um, what would you say to them? I would say report. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of reporting, uh, it reminds me of the saying, like, if you see something, say something. Uh, could you repeat for us how somebody can report at Fort Hood? Yes, here at Fort Hood, we use the, the reporting uh, number 288 COPS, or you call 911. Okay. And then is there anything else you'd like to add, sir? Well, all I'd just say is, uh, you know, our our training here, and not only annually, but we do it at least weekly. We send flyers out, and we let people know what the the situation is in around our installation or around our community. So they can be more informed of what to, uh, what to be expecting, especially if they're attending an event. Uh, They can be uh, more informed of what's going on and how it's going to impact their attendance to those activities. Thank you for coming in, sir. Thank you for having me today. And we'll be back after this. Hey golfers, are you looking for a new course to play? The Courses of Clear Creek is a 27-hole course with challenging greens located in the scenic rolling hills of Fort Hood. With a 300-yard driving range, two putting greens, and a four-hole kids course, we're the premier golf course in Central Texas. Our pro shop is always stocked with the latest golfing equipment and name brand apparel, while our beautiful pavilion overlooking the course is a great place to enjoy a cold beverage. The Courses of Clear Creek, open to the public, offering annual, monthly, and summer membership packages. Give us a call today at 254-287-4130 or find us on the web at hood.armymwr.com. Hey, it's Melissa here from Fort Hood Shelter and Adoptions. Now is a great time to stop by and see what furry friends they have waiting for their forever home. Or, down boy, you can follow their Facebook page called Fort Hood Shelter and Adoptions. The great thing about pets that come from Fort Hood Shelter and Adoptions is... All right now, because they're practically free. Well, sometimes they're free. 
They just need a good mommy or daddy. So stop by Fort Hood Shelter and Adoptions. Check the Facebook page of Fort Hood Shelter and Adoptions. Or even call Fort Hood Shelter and Adoptions at 254-287-4675 to make someone very, very happy. If you've got problems and feel like you just can't get answers, there's a place for you to turn. The Inspector General's Hotline. They take your issues seriously. If you're at the end of your rope and need someone to reach out to, grab a pen and take down this number. 254-287-7209. That's 254-287-7209. The Fort Hood Office of the Inspector General. They inspect generals so you don't have to. It's a me, Super Mario. Woohoo! Hello to all my friends at the Fort Hood's Great Big Podcast. You number one. So that interview, I know a lot of us are like, oh man, I got to do my anti-terrorism. I got to do my SEER training. But seriously though, when you don't do anti-terrorism training and you don't take it seriously, that stuff can get pretty bad. So definitely absorb all that information, just like a sponge, like a really dry sponge. And I just dropped you in some like information ocean. Boom. Soak it up. (laughs) Speaking of oceans, Brianna, didn't you just come back? I did. Uh, that I transition. Was... <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was on vacation for two weeks, but now I am back here with you lovely people. Where did you go? So I went to Wyoming for a little bit, and then I went to Pennsylvania and New York as well. Okay. So wow. I was moving a lot, and yes, I am very tired. <laughs> you actually probably can't tell, but... Uh, I sprained my neck oh, no. um, yesterday because I rode a bunch of roller coasters at an amusement park. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, actually, I actually can't <laughs> move my neck. <laughs> and on the plane ride home, I, it was getting so stiff, like, and my shoulder was hurting and, like, the top of my head. So, like, when I came in and signed on leave, I, like, couldn't even, like, look down. I was just like, I hope this, I'm signing in the right way. <laughs> the right way i can't see it i know so i'm definitely feeling like the oldest person in the room i was just about to say that (laughs) i mean you are old like ancient i know know, i know when i got home i was like man i'm I'm not the 20 year old roller coaster roller coasting fiend that i once was i'm so excited to be uh able to host this with you because i feel like in the past i've always stolen your spot oh (laughs) you know i haven't forgotten about that I'm I'm watching you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's so great to work with you again. It's been a, you're right. It has been a long time. Definitely. So much has happened. Oh my goodness. Whew. Sheesh. So <laughs> you like that, right? So everybody has sayings that they like, advice that they give all the time. Like my dad will say the same thing five hundred thousand times. But same. Do you two have any? old sayings or advice that you love or hate and tell me why. Hmm. The only thing that I can think of is like the, the poster that says like loose lips sink ships. And it's like this hand, like coming out of a, the ocean, like, and like, um, a ship that's burning in the background. Right. That one. I don't really like that one. I don't know why. (laughs) Just hate it. I don't hate it. I just, I don't like it. I don't know. I can't, I can't, I can't explain why. Is it because the person's hand is like a tentacle of the Kraken and it's just (laughs) destroying a ship? No, I I can't really explain it. Mm. Okay. Well, that's fair. I suppose. All the things that I can think of are just like, I don't know. They make me feel super, super like Southern whenever uh, my fiance like calls me out on them. Like, um. If I say, like, oh, do you have all your ducks in a row or uh, don't have a cow or something like that. Oh, and yeah. he's from Arizona and he's never heard those before. And I'm what? like, what do you mean you've never heard those before? Wow. So I figured because, look, I'm not from the south. I'm from Ohio. Mm-hmm. OK, I, I know there's a huge conspiracy that Ohio does not exist, but it, it's real. And <laughs> even I have heard like 
don't have a cow, have all your ducks in a row, and they've not been in a southern accent, have all your ducks in a row. I'm not a southerner at all. I lived in North Carolina for a bit, you know, four years. I was stationed at Fort Bragg, but come on. That's kind of crazy. But you're an honorary southerner now, now yeah. that you're in the calf land. <laughs> yes, even though I am an air defense artillery, but thank you. You must embrace all of our colloquialisms. Okay, well, I I guess I got to do a spur ride and get my spurs too. Okay. Yes, you bet. Yeehaw, you better. <laughs> so there's actually a couple old sayings that I like, but I hate them at the same time. I like the original ones from back in the day, but I don't like what we have now. So here's two. We've all heard the saying, blood is thicker than water, which means that family is more important than friends. That's mm-hmm. what that means. But did you know the original saying is the blood of the covenant is thicker than the water of the womb, which means the exact opposite thing. That one means the bonds that you create amongst strangers and creating friends is stronger than somebody simply being related to you. Now, Mm -hmm. of course, everybody has their own opinion. I'm not arguing. I just think it's interesting how we flip that one all the way around. That's a 180. Yeah. Well, that happens a lot with language. I feel like there's so many sayings or or idioms that that are twisted and confused or or miss um, like between languages. What's that called? I'm blanking. Misinterpreted. (laughs) Yeah, misinterpretation. Yeah, stuff like that. I think that happens all the time. Yeah. Yeah. But I think another um, a, a, a good advice that I received recently that I would love to share with you all is um, there's a, 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 f- a saying, well, it's not like an official saying, but I'm trying to use it now, but it's um, treating treat your friends like your family and your family like your friends. And um, what I've interpreted from that is, um, you know, because we all have family issues or, or um, stressors in our life um, that, in, that involve our blood relatives and, Sometimes it's good to just take a step back and just treat them like your friends instead of the that your family and they will appreciate it more because you're giving them space and vice versa with friends. If you treat them like family, they'll appreciate it a lot more. So I'm trying to do that instead. Wow. Yeah. Some are revelations, you know. (laughs) (laughs) I'm a brand new person now. Just kidding. I'm exactly the same. Two weeks away. I know. (laughs) Right. I have yeah. transformed. Yeah. Speaking of a way, we really are missing Samantha this week. Eh. eh no, I'm kinda. just kidding. I miss her. I miss definitely, her. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> well, I tried to be nice, but I suppose <laughs> not. I hope she's not listening to this, Sam. We love you. We are kidding. Somewhat, maybe, possibly, <laughs> probably not. But she will never know. <laughs> and with that, we'll wrap it up for the week, and we'll see you guys next time. On Fort Hood's Great Big Podcast. Signed, sealed, and delivered. This podcast is a U.S. Army Garrison Fort Hood and Fort Hood Public Affairs production. The show's theme music is written and produced by Delicious All Stars. All our music is obtained through Filter by Song Trader. Have a question or want to share some insights with us? Email us at forthoodpao at gmail.com. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at USAG Fort Hood. And as always, be sure to leave a review and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts.